Hello, everyone. Tom and I are very excited to bring you an exclusive look at our new film, Edge of Tomorrow. Take a look. I mean, I crushed it. But... I crushed it. Crushed it. If we do not defeat them in France, we'll be fighting them in the streets of London, then New York, then Tokyo. All of humanity is at stake. It takes place in the future, and it's an extraordinary adventure. It's got a post-apocalypse feel to it, but people are surviving. Operation Downfall, the entire might of the UDF exterminating this mimic scourge along the way. You know, the character I play, Cage, he's a marketing guy, a PR guy. I want you to sell the invasion. Okay. He's not a warrior in that way. He just wants to get out. He wants to survive. He wants to survive. It really comes down to survival. You ship out to the coast in one hour. While it is an honor general, I'm afraid I'm happy to decline. Thinks he can talk his way out of anything, and he still doesn't believe this is going to happen to him. It's not an offer, Major. It's an order. <laughs> What day is it? Judgment day. You just realize there's no way out. He's not going to get out of combat. Remember, there's no courage without fear. I think there's something wrong with your suit. Yeah, there's a dead guy in it. <laughs> and he's forced into this situation, and he's basically going to die. How do I turn the safety off of my weapon? What? How do I turn the safety off? Oh, my god. Cage killed one of these aliens, and he inherits this alien power to time loop and relive battles day after day after day. What would it be like to live the same day over and over again? I wanted the deaths, you know, first to be terrifying for an audience, and then for it to get to the point where it becomes humorous. What the hell were you thinking? Sergeant Major Rita Brataski, who's the most highly decorated soldier in the United Defense Force, she's this rather mythical hero in the movie. It's an extraordinary badass character. I love her. Bloody hell. It's the full metal bitch. She doesn't like to be called No, that she doesn't like that. But they say I liked effect. being called that. I thought yeah. that was quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, to not play the doe-eyed damsel in distress. Not in this movie, guys. He's absolutely shocked what happens to this great warrior in front of him. Get down! We're getting slaughtered. You need to get us off this beach. But he's saving her to save himself mm -hmm. because he's terrified. Mm. And he doesn't know what's happening to him, and this is a nightmare. Come on! Come find me when you wake up. Yeah. At first, he just wants to find out, you know what's happening to me. Tell me so I can end this and get mm. out. What happened to you happened to me. I had it, I lost it, okay? I feel that when Rita meets Cage for the first time, I think she despairs at the idea that this guy, who has never fought a day in his life, is the only hope to them winning the war. I think she's like, really, this guy? I mean, that's great, there's a cure. How do I get rid of this? First, I need your help. With what exactly? Winning the war. You have Rita, who's also seeing this guy that has that power, has it's that a valuable power. weapon. It's a valuable weapon, and now there's a chance of hope. And he enlists her help to help train him and help him survive. You hijacked their power. How do I control it? You have to die. Thanks. And I think there was nothing more joyous for me than seeing you play a character <laughs> who is so useless at useless. what he's doing and inept at fighting. All right, Cage, let's see what you got. She's teaching him how to be a soldier. Keep your eyes open. The fact that I got to train him is just incredible. Stop, wait, wait a second. Again, again, again. You okay, Kate? I think I broke something. What? 
my back. The only thing I can feel in my lips. I think we'd better start over, don't you? What? By the time the training's over, he's become dangerous. You can do this. I keep coming here every day, and I'll train you. You already have. So you see his struggle, and you admire it and cheer for it. Saj, the new guy. What's his name again? He's having to take on more and more of the realization that, yes, he is going to have to do this. Reload. What do we do now? I don't know. We've never gotten this far. We've been shooting the battle on the beach for like six weeks. And then we went and did the farmhouse scene, and it was just lovely to have a quiet, contemplative. Beautiful set, too. Beautiful the set. The set was beautiful. So gorgeous. And I think it's the first time that she allows herself to open up and the guards come down. And I think within that vulnerable state is when she allows herself to fully realize how unnerving this situation is, that she, this is for her the first time they've been here, but she discovers for him he's done this many, 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 many times. And I think that's a very jarring thing. I can't believe you found coffee. Sugar, right? Here, yeah, here. Ah, hold on. Three. You like three. How many times have we been here? It's as far as you go. No matter what I do, it's just as far as you ever make it. You see how they become friends and how he really starts to care about her, and she's basically all he wants to save. For me, the heart of this film is determination and the perseverance of the human spirit. You really feel these two characters together that are alone but want to save the world. I thought you were dead. Not yet. Time. <laughs> Five for three. Oh, no, and then he goes, two, one. <laughs> the exosuit is supposed to give us this effortless power, and we can run and jump and smash and fight. I did not want to do a CGI suit so that it'll feel real to the audience. I showed up a couple of months early to really R&D the suit. The exosuit itself is very detailed. The kind of weapons that it carries are just fun, cool. I don't think anything quite prepares you for the sheer weight of the suit. The suit itself weighed 85, 90 pounds, and depending on the armament, anywhere from 120 to 125 pounds. And action! I cried on Tom Cruise the first day <laughs> I put the suit on, and I didn't cry again for the rest of the shoot, but that first day I was like so overwhelmed <laughs> by the weight of the suit. Everyone enjoyed the grueling aspects of that suit. And then you get used to it, and I now really love stomping around in the suit. It was exciting to be this lethal powerhouse. <laughs> It's an infectious thing to be around Tom Cruise. He has this wonderful, irrepressible enthusiasm every day on set. <laughs> he strived for it to be the best version of every moment, every scene, every day. It's not just action when it's done well. It's character, it's story. <laughs> Times I was shooting seven days a week on second unit. And for this character, you just, you had to have him get pounded. He does it because he wants people to enjoy themselves. He wants the film to be as incredible as it can be, and he wants you to be great in it as well. So he's a very generous actor. Emily has not done action. There's no easy feat. This is the deep end of action. 
challenge. It was going to be a challenge, so I spent about three months training for it. So I did Krav Maga, which is this Israeli martial arts. I did gymnastics, I did sprint training, I did weight training. I, I then came to London and learned all of the stunts. Three, two, one, action! Trying to capture the choreography and the sheer violence at which she fights was the challenge. first day you thought you broke your nose, do you know I, I mean? almost did break I my know. nose. It had but, to be put back in the You know what I mean? You're doing stunts. <laughs> I smacked myself in the face because I caught my sword on the wire, and Which so is... I hit myself with my own sword. It wasn't even a cool story. It wasn't like, oh, like, Tom missed a punch and smacked me in the face. You know, it was, That's, I hit that my... Not, that that, that would, it would be cool. Been like that would have sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a cool war sucked. wound, you know, like I took a hit, man, you know, but I hit myself. Like, Better if Bill I Paxton did. did it, maybe, but me. Maybe, but like, maybe not you. Idiot. He's a gentleman. He would, do that. he would never miss a hit. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Liman is someone who I've always wanted to work with. Here's a guy who takes a genre like Bourne and invests you in that world and those characters in the same manner Mr. and Mrs. Smith. His filmmaking, he's very unique and very entertaining. And action! Doug is exhilarating to work with in many ways because you never know what he's going to throw at you or what shot he wants to try next. You come out and it's, there it is. It was like shooting an independent, you know, totally. big budget film. Which he's very spontaneous, Doug. You know, yep. he's that's quite, you know, exciting and exhilarating for us to be around. Somebody who's willing to try anything on the day, and he's game for anything to the point where he'll grab the camera off the camera guy. He'll run around and pretend to be an alien for us to kind of react to. You know. Mimic, mimic. <laughs> What this movie's about, this unique characters in extraordinary circumstances. The film becomes about these characters wanting to do the right thing. That was the journey that we went on every day, was really trying to find the humanity in this relationship in a very high concept movie. And so it is science fiction, but it's just a big adventure. It's going to be dark in a few hours. And curl up by the fire and open a bottle of wine. We should just reset. Whoa! I think if we look at each other and then we go, hope, hope to, to see you tomorrow. <laughs> 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 hope, hope to, to see, see you tomorrow. <laughs> it's got humor. It's got scandal. It's like, what do you want to see? It's got it. Yeah, keep, yeah, keep staring, no, keep staring, keep staring. staring. Keep Who's going to break? Who's going to break? Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>